la medicina di genere. Gender medicine is the medicine that compares the scientific data referring to women and men with the same symptoms, pathologies, illness experiences and highlights the discovered characteristics of the differences. It is fundamental in research, both scientific and humanistic legal, taking into consideration the differences of sex, gender. I remember that these two terms are still very misunderstood and used improperly. Sex refers to the different biological and physiological characteristics while gender refers socially constructed characteristics or how an individual perceives himself in his personal, family, social and cultural context. Gender medicine is precisely the first step towards personalized medicine because it allows us to take into consideration first of all the person in front of us and to evaluate a set of data capable of influencing individual susceptibility to the disease and able to condition the how the disease will affect the patient, and how the patient will respond to treatment. The next step will be personalized medicine, the one that refers, in a broader way, to the ability to put together the information concerning the patient in all its aspects, not considering only the genetic and molecular aspects but integrated with the study of the genetic and general characteristics, genetics and of the patient more widely related to each single person. Sex gender differences have a profound impact on pathological manifestations. It is now acquired knowledge that in many pathologies the symptoms and the response to drugs are profoundly different between men and women. For this reason, sex gender differences are of fundamental importance in medicine in all fields that deal with people's health. Research that takes into account these differences in Italy is in advanced stage but there is a need for rewards and actions that can give more encouragement to this fundamental and more appropriate approach, because it is essential to have data disaggregated by sex, gender. Unfortunately, appreciated still high of publications does not take into account the differences in the data analysis. Western European medicine is based on the stereotype of a healthy, 70 kilo, young man, typology of the majority of participants in clinical and pharmacological research. But the drugs in the therapies are intended for all of us men and women and are tested for 80% on males. Only half of the clinical studies consider sex, gender differences and one in three reports adequately disaggregated and differentiated data and therefore we absolutely must help to change the present situation with rewards and funding that must consider the higher costs that these studies have, and a policy that takes all of this into consideration. With the advancement of knowledge on the pathophysiology of COVID-19, for example, the impact of gender differences on the disease, incidence, symptoms as well as therapeutic response and adverse drug reactions has become more evident. These striking data for COVID-19 will certainly be an incentive to continue the study of the differences also for other pathologies. Those who collected and studied the data highlighted a greater lethality in men than in women, Although it seems that the infection is more frequent in women, but we need to understand why. Many studies are underway to understand the biological causes of the differences between men and women in this pathology. 
The results that will allow us to understand the true causes of sex, gender differences in the manifestations of COVID-19 can be used to implement new strategies both at the level of prevention and at the level of therapy. Taking into account the differences of sex and gender necessarily leads to optimizing and making treatment more appropriate. At the University of Ferrara we founded a university center for studies on gender medicine in 2018, in collaboration with the Institute of Public Health and is currently the only university center in Italy. The aim of the center is to promote and develop interdisciplinary research by collecting data disaggregated by sex, participating in scientific projects promoted by public research bodies, with the production of support services for research and teaching. We have internally researchers who they study in various fields toward this target. For example, in my sector, biochemistry, in collaboration with neurologists we have highlighted a different permeability to sex-linked blood-brain barrier proteins, hence the need to calibrate the patient's laboratory diagnostics, to avoid overestimating, in the male, or underestimate, in females, any barrier damage. Important studies of gender pharmacology and gender psychosociology are then carried out in our center. We also do translational research in numerous complex diseases such as cardiovascular, neurodegenerative, pediatric cancers, type 2 diabetes, autism, and emerging viral diseases such as COVID-19, where sex, gender differences affect individual susceptibility to get sick, the outcome and prognosis and response to treatments. In our center we are trying to understand what are the genetic factors that make it more susceptible or more resistant to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Research is carried out that considers aspects and differences in the genome, in the epigenome and in the environment to achieve both precision and personalized medicine. We must act immediately to train future professionals with this methodological approach that changes and expands teaching in the various disciplines. Gender medicine, I remember, is not teaching, it is not a discipline, but an approach that differentiates the themes of the various disciplines by sex and gender, so it must be present in all courses that allow it. Already in 2016 at a national level, the Conference of the Presidents of the Degree Course of Medicine and Surgery recommended with a motion to all the medicine degree programs to sensitize the new generations of doctors already during their training, structuring the sex-gender approach as an integral part of the learning objectives. At the University of Ferrara where I am the educational dean in degree course in medicine and surgery, we have included this approach in the course objectives since 2017-18, then declaring them in the programs of the various courses across the board 70% have already did it, so they are taught with this update. We are also doing the same in specialization schools and health professions even if with different targets. This awareness has spontaneously led to a significant growth in the number of degree theses already in the space of three years, we are already 20% of the total theses, that address the various issues with this approach. These are all indicators that can be monitored to see how this awareness is spreading. However, all this is about to be regulated and also at law level. We now have Article 3 of Law No. 3 of 2018, 
whose paragraph 4 concerns precisely that National Training Plan for Gender Medicine, whose implementation decrees are about to be concluded and will oblige to take them into account in the training of both current professionals and university students. This will lead to greater appropriateness of care which will translate into better care. Gender medicine is a silent but disruptive cultural revolution that re-examines and studies how gender differences, by structuring them and considering them an integral part of prevention and treatment processes, impact on the state of health and disease. It is a methodical action on the three missions that characterize the medical area at the university, namely research, training, and assistance because what you discover is taught to others and then transferred to assistants. To overcome the past and present gender gap, it is necessary to start from research which, according to the principle of communicating vessels, spills over on training and transfers to assistants, improving the appropriateness of care. For the future, we expect gender medicine to be applied and adequately supported financially. It is not just a change in the mindset of researchers and various health professionals. At the political level there must be this type of request, which must also be considered as project financing, ad hoc and less centralized, but more widespread, to enter all productive sectors. But if you ask me about the future I hope that in 20 years we will no longer talk about gender medicine, because it means that it will have become the normal approach of medicine in all fields. Salam alaikum, Fatima Chamek, fourth year medicine and surgery student at the University of Ferrara. Before enrolling at university, I read an article that highlighted the interest I later found in sex and gender based medicine, a topic that fascinated me right away. In deepening this approach, I was able to understand how the doctor patient relationship is strongly conditioned by gender factors. Failure to consider the patient's experience and gender role can interfere both in the consideration and interpretation of symptoms, in the diagnosis and in the choice of therapeutic measures, and the absence of gender-sensitive guidelines can lead to a diagnosis that is not entirely appropriate. Even the drugs that are prescribed have been studied almost exclusively on men, without taking into account the existing differences. There is certainly an important interest in gender medicine, so much so that the university provides students with tools to recognize substantial differences. We are talking of newly graduated doctors who are not only aware of gender differences, but also trained in these differences. In fact, education and awareness of differences are basic tools for the future doctor who focuses on the patient's gender, to understand the pathology and its possible evolution.
My name is Anna Denarduz and in a few days I will be discussing a thesis on sex and gender differences in medicine. The theme of the centrality of the patient, an interest I developed in the course of my studies, is a key element of sex and gender-based medicine. Sex and gender-based medicine started from studies in cardiology in 1991 when the cardiologist Bernadine Healy denounced the different treatment in terms of diagnosis, procedures and therapy undergone by men and women, always to the detriment of women. During the writing of the thesis I focused on the relevance of integrating sex and gender variables in the approach to cardiology, in particular to sudden cardiac death, by analyzing how gender biases influence research, clinical practice and university education. There are indeed gender biases both in resuscitation practice and in practice of cardiopulmonary resuscitation during cardiac arrest. We can distinguish three main reasons why there is less resuscitation in women by both professionals and the population. First, the failure to recognize cardiac arrest as a medical emergency, often misunderstood for fainting. Second, fear or excess of modesty in touching the chest or exposing the breast of a woman. Third, for the perception of the woman with more fragile bones and therefore the fear that she will suffer injuries in the resuscitation process. Since cardiopulmonary resuscitation is a chrono-dependent process, it is clear that rescue should not be avoided or delayed, which interferes with life or death. Gender medicine is a good approach that should spread rapidly in every branch of medicine. For rescue from sudden cardiac death there is need to recognize the problem and speak openly about the fact that it is normal to feel fear or shame, both in the courses for operators and in the courses of first aid to the population, and that the gender stereotypes can compromise the right to health. Hi, my name is Ines and I am a molecular biologist in my second year of PhD in molecular medicine at the University of Ferrara. I take part in the international project, COVID-19 Host Genetic Initiative, and my research aims to identify sex-specific genetic risk factors to the susceptibility and severity of COVID-19. The aim of my project is to identify genetic and epigenetic biomarkers also inherited from our ancestors such as Neanderthals, that could act as indicators of risk of infection, predict negative prognosis and give us information on the effectiveness and response to vaccinations. I would like the results of my research to help bridge the gap between the two sexes and I hope that platforms, databases will be generated to share the results also on an individual level, where possible, for the benefit of the scientific community.
aver considerato sesso e genere. Neglecting sex and gender in the study of pathologies is a serious mistake made in the past, which must be solved with a holistic approach to the disease. Sexomics and genderomics must be considered on a par with all other omics sciences. I'm Giovanna, molecular biologist and last year PhD student in molecular medicine at the University of Ferrara. My research is part of the European Cardio Protection Project and aims to improve clinical outcomes in cardiovascular diseases of patients, in particular of caring of women, still in lack of dedicated therapies. To carry out my project I make use of two fundamental points. First of all, the identification of genetic and circulating prognostic biomarkers in the field of sex and gender. And secondly, the development of advanced cellular and molecular models, such as the creation of 3D bioscaffolds for sex-specific personalized therapies. The aim of my research is to try to reduce the gap between the two sexes that exists today, particularly in pathologies in regard to diagnosis and prognosis. My name is Matilda Piazza and I am a last year student of the medicine and surgery course at the University of Ferrara. During my studies, my attention was drawn to gender medicine, which is the subject of my dissertation. Gender medicine is a study methodology that takes into account sex and gender differences and their influence on the state of health and disease. In our degree program, the gender-oriented approach is included in many courses starting from preclinical subjects, such as biology and pharmacology. It is above all in the context of some chronic pathologies of female aging, such as osteoporosis, dementia, cardiovascular diseases and diabetes that important gender differences are described. Historically, men have always been considered to have a higher cardiovascular risk than women and this has led to different clinical and therapeutic attention to risk factors in the two sexes. Women indeed have a cardiovascular advantage, provided by estrogen hormones in childbearing age, but this advantage is lost after menopause and cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in women after the age of 50. In women, the relative risk of stroke is 27% higher, and that of coronary heart disease is 44% higher than men. Furthermore, strong evidence suggests that type 2 diabetes may confer a higher risk of cardiovascular disease in women than in men, through mechanisms that are still not fully understood, such as the existence of gender-specific risk factors, gestational diabetes and hypertension in pregnancy, and the disparity of treatment in controlling the main risk factors for cardiovascular disease. In our research we are studying the mechanisms responsible for the excess risk of cardiovascular diseases in women, with the recruitment of healthy and diabetic women, 
both of childbearing age and after menopause, as wheel as a sample of men. The goal is to investigate the association of diabetes with dyslipidemia that typically occurs in these patients. Researching, from a gender perspective, the qualitative and functional modifications of the subclasses of lipoproteins, or of the individual particles that transport fats, in order to pave the way for the development of new clinical objectives and therapeutic targets, with the aim of achieving the so-called precision medicine. Mi chiamo Valeria Raparelli. Sono un medico. My name is Valeria Raparelli. I am a doctor, a researcher and a university professor of the Department of Translational Medicine and for Romagna of the University of Ferrara, as well as affiliated with the University Center for Gender Medicine Studies of the same university. For about 10 years I have developed my interest in the sex and gender-oriented approach in clinical research. Specifically, over the past two years at McGill University in Montreal, Canada, I have developed a methodology that guides researchers in integrating sex-dependent biological and psychosociocultural or gender-related factors into the design and planning of clinical trials and in the evaluation of the data deriving from them. In the era of precision medicine, which is based on the patient and not on the disease, as health professionals and as teachers of the faculty of medicine and surgery we have to answer questions. Do we all get sick in the same way? Are the health determinants affecting chronic diseases different by sex and gender? And above all, how do we make the future generation aware of the differences to provide care that is fair and more specific? We are trying to answer all these questions through the activity of an international transatlantic network, going forward, on two levels. On the one hand, trying to provide evidence to support the role of gender in the development and progression of chronic non-communicable diseases, putting together European and Canadian databases. In particular, for example, we have shown how characteristics that society typically ascribes to women determine an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease regardless of biological sex. From the point of view of the training of future generations we are trying, as medical faculty teachers, to propose diversified clinical scenarios for the same pathology to the students of the medical faculties, so that they are able to apply differential diagnostic and therapeutic approaches, depending on the sex and gender of the individual and the patient they will have to manage. In conclusion, therefore, from my point of view, gender medicine is a transversal approach that can be applied in the clinical and research fields, whose ambitious goal is to guarantee equity in care through a correct stratification of individual needs.
My name is Juliana and I'm a last year PhD student in molecular medicine at the University of Ferrara under the supervision of Professor Donato Gemati and Veronica Cisato. I'm currently working with autism spectrum disorder in children, their parents and siblings. We are investigating possible biomarkers for early diagnosis and target therapies. As a specific feature of our research, we are analyzing genetic variants and it is impacting the epigenetic mechanism that modify gene expression in a gene stratification model. I hope that for the future, gender medicine goes beyond those conditions that affect the reproductive system and analyze all the biological components that make female and male different, such as influence of social, cultural and political factors. The effects of sex and gender act from the early stages of intrauterine life, influencing the onset and the development of various pathologies. A modern and personalized medicine must be based on these two factors, which should be considered as fundamental and essential from now on. <laughs>